Hello, everyone in the YouTube universe. Hope you're having a wonderful Wednesday, 3 p.m. Central. You know, we share different times, but we share the same desires. And today we're just trying to get to the bottom of, are these good? That's really, I've baited you here now. We're doing the tone bender thing. But I do want to share, anybody, you want some of these? You want a few? Addison, you want some? Yep. You could. Okay, let's do that Addison cam. You could throw it. Hey. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, moving on. They're good. To, to, you know, this is the guilt-free snack. Right, because? Well, let me read some stats okay, here. Okay, thank you. Ten pieces, 100 calories. That's it? Yeah, I mean, and they're peanut and gluten-free. So that means I can eat them. They have some strange ingredients, but you only live once. Right. YOLO. As they say, so, it's amazing. Nick's not here. I have Joshua here to my left, where Addison is usually at. So, <laughs> <laughs> and then we have Addison on the drums because cheating. he's a he's a multilingual musician. Is that the term? That's the Multi term. Yeah, that's what they say. Uh, Nick has had his new offspring come into the earth, and he is at home on vacation. Adorable. So we'll let him do that announcement officially later. Yeah. So we're here all because of this. Ooh. The Waza Tone Bender. Uh, this one's never been out of the packaging, I don't think. Nope. I haven't So taken it as of right now, I have two. Um, we'll put the lid on this. Dang. And I think it's going on the shelf. I'm going to open it when you leave. <laughs> <laughs> Just to be a punk. <laughs> That's fine. Just don't let me know. Okay, cool. Because if I speak in honesty from my perspective, then yeah. I'm telling the truth. Right. <laughs> you know, if you want to mess around with it, just don't let me know. But I'll know you're lying. <clears throat> yeah, because you tricked me. Exactly. All right. Uh, yeah, we're, we're getting into, if you look down at the pedal board here, um, I have a bunch of tone benders, but we're really going to just focus on this section Uh Today for reverb, I'm going to use the Silver Lake by Seymour Duncan. It's really cool. I've had it for a couple of years. Yeah, I'm going to use like one setting. It has 100 presets. <laughs> I just really like it. Um, and then the new Oracle Analog Echo from Mythos. And this is our point of focus. It is the Boss Tone Bender TB2 Waza. Solar Sound London LTD collaboration. So if you remember back in 2017, I did the collaboration, the Angry Driver, which is still a product. This is, this is obviously is not a Waza, but this is in following in those footsteps. And honestly, I gotta think it's cooler. I mean, it's are you plugging? Kind of amazing. Your own pedal? On. No, I'm not. I don't do that stuff. Nope. It's so ridiculous. Pretty lame. Yeah. So we're gonna play these. And we're going to just talk about, is it worth it? Which right. poses a really hard question. Yep. Worth is subjective. Yep. I often say something's worth what someone will pay. Yep. And then you have a perspective where people, especially on the internet, you they guys. don't do this in person. Right. On the internet, people get real sassy about pricing availability and things and they have a lot of opinions that they might not fully understand the full story so we're going to get into that in a bit we have a couple giveaways we're going to do an ernie ball trivia time a little bit later you'll the winner will get a full box of any ernie ball string they choose we're going to give away some hercules um wall hangers yeah some wall hangers. how many right of those here. you want to do today we're, we got two of them I mean, two? we can do as many as we want but They're killer yeah we got we have that yep and yeah, but first I want to talk about a hot topic. Let's do that. Hot Let's do it. Topics. <clears throat> the hot topic today is a question. Yep. And the question is Josh, JHS show. It's all what's up with all these paid promotions where you're pushing products like the Waza Tone Bender or in our recent episode, the Rush Box Bio, there were comments saying that we were obviously pushing reverb cells. Obviously. Um, yeah, it's really frustrating. I don't do paid promotion. We don't do that. We've been very clear. We have the mono pedal board cam. Go back to that. They're a sponsor of the show. Yep. And we're clear about that. They yep. help fund a lot of things here. It takes a lot to do the show. 
And then we do Ernie Ball trivia time. We're very clear about that. Very clear. They've been helpful. Yep. And that's it. We have Band Lab, which you can download the stems. We don't do the game. I do not do the game of someone sends me a pedal and gives me money to show the pedal. And the reason I don't do that, and I won't ever do that, is because it takes away from the authenticity of why I do the show. I do the show because of history, trying to have a clean slate for consumers to hear someone like me give an opinion, although these are just my opinions. I'm not pedal god or something. It's just I want to share my opinion without money influencing my opinion. I do not need the show. I have a pedal company. We have employees. The show is... It's an extracurricular thing that I love to do. And I hope that comes across if you're a subscriber and that you've seen stuff. So, yeah, I just wanted to hit on that. And are there any internal thoughts here, Addison? You work here. Like, what? I got a How thought. does it feel? Because yeah. you did a majority of editing on the Pep Box episode. Did. And then to hear people yeah. say, like, oh, it's paid yeah. promotion. Like, no, nope. not paid yeah. at all. What do you think? Well, I was thinking while you were talking, I thought of an analogy. You're like the pedal grandpa. Okay, so you're not pedal god. That's great. And you're eating yeah. a Tootsie Roll. Like my grandpa would. He'd eat a piece of candy. Yeah. You're like <laughs> guilt free. Guilt free. You're guilt free right now. You the grandpa is this older, wise wiser gentleman that you want to learn from, uh, that will offer you his free advice and it'll be what it is. And he doesn't need your money because he's grandpa. He's old and he just doesn't need it. And so that's you. You don't need this. You like to do it. You like to offer advice. You like to help people. You love to teach. Um, yeah, I, I think it's, you know, people just don't yeah. understand. So this is just us going, hey, I generally, I, like, I legitimately love this. Right. And so it's frustrating. Um, that's why this is a hot topic for me. Yeah. When you look at, I have two of these. I literally have a collaborative boss pedal, but I paid full retail price from Sweetwater yep. for these. When it was released, right. I called my sales rep like you and i ordered them when it was said i could order them and i have two i paid 349 dollars a piece for them i will not make a dime from boss on this we do run ads which further helps pay for some of the staffing here for the show yeah that's it so that's today's hot topic any any final closing comments here Anybody? No? I just think the world needed to know. That I, was it. Sometimes you just need to see, you need to be awkward. You got to tell. Moment. You got to tell. Yeah. And so if you're watching this, yes, if you see people saying that, chime in and just be like, hey, no, it's not how it works. Um, that's today's Hot Topic. Let's move on and talk about the Tone Bender. Hot Topics. All right. <clears throat> so this pedal is crazy controversial. It is the Tone Bender Waza edition. I'm going to pull up a web browser here, and we're going to look at Reverb Marketplace. Reverb's not paying me. It's just a site that I actually use and buy stuff. Um, now, let's see here. Let me hit that. There we go. We seeing that on the stream? Yeah? Just need a confirmation. It's fine. Yeah, so... I'm going to scroll through here, and is it not popping up? Live. There we go. There we go. Okay. So the prices are ridiculous on this. This is crazy. This is a $330, um, $349 release. So the reason I'm here is I'm asking the question, is this pedal worth it? Okay, so we we have to be like, okay, it's a $349 release. I'm going to say that is absolutely a very nice price for this pedal, the trouble they've gone through, the collaborative nature of it, the fact that they're giving Sola Sound, Color Sound, a royalty, which is due. There's this legacy. It's, it's, a, on, yeah. it's on par with other things that we see it's that cheaper are, are than like other that. Things. It is true. It's yeah, absolutely, absolutely cheaper. Especially for what it is. So now we have to talk about this this issue of scalping. So, yeah. Hot topics. It, <laughs> Two hot this topics is tough. Today. This is tough because when we look through here, $1,200, $2,900. So one thing about 
selling things, you can be selling something and it never sell. So when you see prices, it doesn't mean they're actually selling for this. This is important when you get into like looking at pedals and trying to figure that stuff out. So let's go to the filters and I'm going to filter in reverb here. Um, where's it at? I want to filter sold. They move it. There it is. Sold. These are the actual sold prices, which are a little bit shocking to me. Um, five Same. five ninety nine. Is it worth it? I think so. They made three thousand of these. They're a collector's piece. They, I've seen some really ignorant comments about. I try not to rabbit trail, but I need to pull the camera back up here. There's like some really ignorant comments about boss really dropped the ball on this release. Why they only do that many, et cetera, et cetera. To do it at the level they did this, the quality, real germanium, Japanese engineering, carrying on the Sola Sound name, using their mark royalties, they were able to make 3,000 due to parts. It's a really brilliant design. That's what they had to offer. We, sh In my opinion, we should be happy, and that's it. We don't get to make the call for boss. Like... I don't get to call Yoshi and complain and like whine about my opinions of everything they do. I either like boss and their products or I don't. And that's enough. And I think that speaks across the board. Like we did a limited release of morning glories and had people upset, mm -hmm. people scalping them. That's all we could do. It's all we wanted to do. They were limited because of how we built them mm -hmm. and the narrative of the movie and like a throwback. And that's what we did. So there's a lesson here. I would encourage you as consumers, this is the grandpa, I guess. Welcome back. Why complain about something you can't change? And why not just trust that a manufacturer has best interest in place? Like Boss has been around forever. They are the biggest pedal company in the world. They know what they're doing. Yoshi, in my opinion, is as integral as it gets. They made the choice to do 3,000. You could have done the pre-order like everyone else. I have two right here at a retail price, but instead people choose to complain. So that's my grandpa rant. Yep. I think you hit a really important important point as well that I remember reading or seeing. Uh, maybe I heard Anthony Macari talking about it in the, the video he did with Boss, but there was a limited parts quantity, right? That was like a yeah. big thing for these. These are hard to make. That's a, that's a thing. And so that's like mm -hmm. a very real life tangible. Like they're not going to be able to continue to, to make these like the, the metal zones and the DS ones. Yeah. They've only got they, so much part. Yeah. Stuff, and words. the story, it they're harder to make. They're complicated from a production standpoint. There's a reason people don't use germanium bosses for boss to go into it. The way they did is actually really impressive yeah. that they didn't use silicon. Like for me, I know enough about germanium. I build germanium. I have the 66 series. I charge three 99 for those. They sell instantly. I do a 1.5 tone bender. It's not like this one. They're just hard to build. There's a demand on that skill. I, in my Legends of Fuzz for 179, I took, if you look down, I took this pedal and replicated it using silicon because I didn't want to mess with germanium. Mm -hmm. That's why mine was 179. That's why you can buy them unlimited. But Boss saying, no, we're doing the germanium. We're going the hard route. Yeah, I just think we need to learn to not complain. Yeah. For those for those out there that difference quick yeah. germanium yeah. silicon we like thirty second yeah the why is that hard so you had valve tube amplification early on so tube amps tube radios the first form of stable amplification was the valve or the tube uh, tube amp you know then solid state comes along and the solid state device is transistor amplification so instead of a glass tube. We are introduced to this three-legged transistor amplifier, and it's made with the germanium element, and they're called germanium. They're really unstable. Temperature changes the gain, meaning if I open up one of these fuzz pedals here with germanium and hold my hand over it or touch it, it'll get dirtier. It's like a really unstable device. And then later, silicon version of that is introduced, much more stable but looked down upon by a lot of people who don't really know why they looked at this. They've been told to look down on it. So yeah, there is a difference there. Germanium's hard to work with. There is a reason, reason it's obsolete. 
it's really not fun to build with germanium. Yeah. On and a scale that's on a scale of building things yeah. like we do or like boss is way beyond us. I mean, it's it's difficult. They tend to be a little bit uh, not disposable, like more disposable, but they're just like there's m more bad eggs, right? Yeah. In, so in the if they made 3,000 of these, I don't know how they manufactured this. I actually want to, I never got to open it up, but let's say they made their own transistor. There's going to be some tolerance. I would just say if there's 3,000 good pairs, this actually would have three transistors in it. I mean, they probably have a bucket somewhere with thousands of unusables. People That's don't crazy. understand that. Right. The effort, they yep. could have been building metal zones. Right. Like they're a business. Boss is a business and they do not owe you this favor of like running their production line in the ground so they can make 10,000 of these so people don't scout. They're just, they're, they're just doing something for fun and for the story. And I appreciate that. So on that philosophical level, these are very much worth it. Yeah. Let's go back and look at this. These are sold prices. This actually shocked me. 2000, 2900, 1250. That is wild. I actually like I'm having a hard time grasping. Like I see a 599. I would probably pay 599 for this to get it in the room and archive it. Yep. 349, somebody got lucky there. Dang, yeah they did. I mean, I'm really blown away. A bunch of 800s, 900s. But a lot of post 1000, like I'm thoroughly shocked. When we first saw this, I, my mouth just about hit the floor to see that $2,000 price. I mean, the idea of collecting something I get, if this was 10 years from now, somebody could go, man, I want that boss pedal for my boss collection. And they could spend two grand on, on one of these because it's, you know, been 10 years since they were manufactured, whatever. But having just been dropped, I'm curious to know what it'll look like in the next six months to a year. If people kind of cool off a little bit, if they'll go, you know, oh, let's, uh, yeah, don't need one of these as much, whatever. Yeah, you know, the scalping thing go. is frustrating. I read this morning, um, you know, Yoshi and Aunt Makari, they made some comments about the scalping. There's an article, you can Google it. They both hate it. Like, I hate it. Like, Yoshi made the comment about, we don't make stuff for these scalpers and how frustrating it is that people are buying pedals and just flipping them over, not wanting them. But then there's genuinely, there are more than 3000 people on earth that would just love to have this, but yet people buy them and flip them. And it's just really kind of lame. You know, it just feels lame. I get it. I mean, business is business, whatever you can, you can have a different side on the ethics of it. But at the end of the day, I don't want to complain about them making 3000. They did what they felt was smart to do. It's a really good product. And, uh, you know, why do we need it? I guess that's my next question before we get into demoing it. I think we need it because it's awesome. Yeah, the prices are crazy. Why do this, though? Well, Boss and Solo Sound wanted to do it. So do it. Like, that's how the world works. Um, it sure is fun. When I think it's, about it yeah. and see it, I'm like, man, this that's just that gets me excited. It's like a cool new piece. It's a boss thing that looks like, you know, tone bender vibes. That's fun. It's super fun. I think there's an uh there's a bit of a lost narrative I'd like to share. I don't think bosses or any of the two companies have shared this directly, but historically I'm really aware of something cool with this to bring to light is that Boss introduces the compact series in 77. They dropped the SP1, the Phaser, and the uh, OD1. And they immediately break most of the pedal industry. We see MXR go bankrupt by the early 80s. Um, we see Electroharmonics. We can't directly tie that completely to Boss, but we know it was a massive piece of it. And we see color sound basically disappear. Now, one of the things that's interesting is that Boss killed color sound like literally put the tone bender out of business music change music industry new wave the whole like tears for fears did not need a tone bender you know prince didn't need a tone bender and it's really cool that yoshi i think there's a recognition here of like of reaching back and extending this collaboration 
in this interesting circular motion. I think there's something to it. Like I know Yoshi well. He's an amazing guy. And I think this is Boss extending the gratitude for another company, recognizing how important Color Sound Solo Sound is to pedals and collaborating with them. So in this like strange turn of events, the very company that kind of kind of, you know, stuck their sword through them <laughs> comes that, back yeah. and collaborates with them that's awesome and another reason this is cool i so, imagine this was unintentional there was n- there probably wasn't somebody at boss going we're gonna destroy no. all the uh, you no, know boss never was like that yeah. but that's how the markets work yep. i mean boss offered a superior product yep silent switching buffers amazingly clean circuits You didn't have to take the back off to put a battery in. This is like simple things we take for granted. A power cable, nine volt. Like we just think that existed. Yeah. When you look down at the board here, this 73 tone bender doesn't have a status LED. Right. Wow. So in four years, Boss invents this and kills this. And so I think, yeah, Boss isn't, they're not trying to take over the world or that's not the, the motive. But yeah, I think that's another reason this is really cool. It shows the spirit of the guitar and the pedal community. And I think that Boss, I mean, man, I I, I have so many stories of just Yoshi's kindness to me, to our company, the collaboration that we've done. Um, they're amazing people. And I, I am such a fan of this um, that I'm so glad to see it come into the story and in the pedal timeline. I think it's awesome. I think it's cool because it'll also sort of, uh, well, it points back to, you know, places in history. And it's just another, like, point and marker in history to, to like, remind people of of where we came from and, and you know, where, like, very influential stuff came from. So that, I, I guess I'm saying, like, that speaks really highly of a huge company like Boss to go, hey, Solo Sound, you know, you're a, you're a household name, so to speak, but yeah. we want to do something with you. And you know, essentially just like, I don't know. Yeah. I don't know if drive traffic's it's, the right way to say it. It's super cool. It is it's cool. It's super cool that they did this. And um, again, as a consumer, I am a consumer. I mean, right now I bought these two. Everything you see on the show, I buy it unless somebody sends it and I like it and I'll use it or whatever. But yeah, I, from my point of view, like I'm really excited for this. I love the narrative. I love the story. I am amazed that they're selling for over a thousand used. Give it a few months. Mm-hmm. There's three thousand on the market. Fads come and go. People's hype levels drop. There's something new. I think the prices will go down around yeah. that five hundred dollar mark, and you can pick one up, and it's worth every dime. Yeah, that's kind of my final statement on that. I think we should play them. Let's go. Let's go down to the board. Um, so I've got the. MIG-50 under the table here. Let me use this verb. I found a... We're going to be probably playing sad shoegaze fuzz music. That's fine. So I've got a... Josh was happy about that. Yeah. I've got a hall setting I like. Just something simple. And then here's this oracle delay. This is so cool. He's doing amazing stuff. Um, feedback. So this is Bucket Brigade with tap tempo. There's a tap jack. So the look of this is so good. It's sick. That's a, that's a strong font game. Real strong. Good Great color, color choice. Great color. So we've got that. Um, and then here's our suspect. What I have here next to it, this is a reproduction. I don't have a real MK1. They're literally impossible what? to find. I don't have this pedal, and it's fun. I just have to have that. It's fun. If anybody ever finds a real MK1, mortgage your house, buy it, and then I'll mortgage something I have and buy it. <laughs> it's insane. Um, so this is the David Main Damn Pedals Guy reproduction. It's killer. Uh, these are made for uh, color sound. 
soul sound. So yep. this is an official reproduction in the same way that they let Boss do this. He lets David, and he sells these in the store at Macari's. You cannot currently buy one. I just They're, looked. Well, they do them, and, yeah. yeah. They Small sell rings. out instantly. They're and really crazy expensive. Crazy. Um, but this is cool. It's a very accurate reproduction. And then next to it, this is a damn reproduction. It's a really famous Mark II clone. Uh, if you go back to, there was an episode where I asked Jamie Stillman his favorite pedals, and he said this was one of the, his favorite pedals ever. Um, but it's MK2. So this is based on an MK2. So there, if you can see the colors, there's a reason they look like this. This is a Mark II Vox original, and then this is a real 1.5. That gray theme is part of the legacy of the Tone Bender. The real Mark II is in a box similar to these, and it is very much, uh, you know, you think Jimmy Page. It's like it has that feeling to the aesthetic. That's what they used. This is a Mark III. Mark III's and Mark IVs are essentially the same thing. You'll see Park over here. That was a rebranded this for Jim Marshall's Park Company, Carl's Bro. Then there's like some other reproductions that are licensed, all sold by Macari's. And then you have Vox Tone Benders. Um, you have the first ever Tone Bender collaboration was this Ranger Effects Frankenbender. It's really fun. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's wild. Is that so, the Ranger that yeah. we? That yeah, guy? so there's no the episode way. who is Ranger FX. He that's did cool. he did a collaboration a while back. He's a Londoner as well down the street and that's cool. So yeah, we're just gonna play through these. So first, what does the thing sound like? That's what everybody's wanting to know. I'm just gonna go right to it. Let's keep it on the, the down cam. And I'm gonna max out the fuzz and kind of play through the stages for you. So that's attack all the way up. I'm going to roll it back. Just play a, a, a chord. Then we have a voltage toggle, which is super interesting. You have 12 volts, 9 volts, and then 3, I believe. 7. So I'm going to start at 7. Put the attack up in the corner. Now, it's also notable that Boss got from Aunt Macari an actual Mark II from the archive. The 500th ever made. Pretty special pedal. I've played that pedal at Macari's. It sounds awesome. I think it's on the episode I did with that pedal show where we're in Macari's. They took that, and that is the basis of this sound. So they're going to sound different. You could put some Mark IIs together. I have several of these. They sound different, yada, yada. So, but yeah. Here's seven volts. Here is nine It feels very different. I I can hear it translating, but it's totally feel. That feels way different. I like that a lot, the 12. And then max it out. The thing that's cool about the Mark II is I've always felt like Mark IIs in general have more mids. And this I think it's a perfect choice for like where we're at in 2021 with fuzz. It's going to stick through more. This tone bender to me can almost sound like you're stacking it, which is what I do with fuzzes. I always put a claw on after for the mid-range honk or like a tube screamer. The Mark II to me has a type of midi midness to it that I don't much sense in the others i'll play through some of these here uh, and then we're going to jam on this one but like here's a mark one this is built by david main so it has a different top end it's gating 
Here is the same person's Mark II, but from their own company, the professional Mark II. It has a different high mids to it than the one. This was a really good sounding pedal. That's pretty different. It's got... The Mark II's got uh, less like low mid action going on. Yeah, for this sure. is gating, which I really okay. like. Nice. This is a replica of an actual Mark I that Ant has, and I've played that real Mark I, and the thing, it's on that pedal episode, the pedal show episode I'm on. That's the thing we talk about is this gate. So it's bias different or something going on there. I don't know the exact. This is just a great fuzz. That's There's cool. a reason this is Jamie Stillman's favorite. Then you have the, the Mark III or IV. <laughs> Wildly different. And it's a tone control. And that's what I used in the Legends of Fuzz. This is my favorite tone bender variation ever, which is... The park, the car, these are all the same. They just look different. Then you have this. It's on par with this. It's amazing. Uh, so that comparison alone, retail, is like a joke. This is yeah. way cheaper. Right. Um, so let's jam. What's the Real quick, what's the voltage doing in the circuit on the boss? Um, again, I have not looked into cool. circuit okay. wizardry. Nice. I know that boss took time to do their genius stuff to this so yeah, yeah. there's a buffer switch on the back um which allows this to not care if you have it first which is huge Amazing. these have to be first or they sound like hot garbage come on that's so, cool so this is uh that's out of the out of the way i i i assume because of boss it's incredibly stable i don't know if they did any kind of temperature magic the voltage thing yeah I don't know. I have not seen a schematic. Um, I just, I know it's going to be good or they wouldn't have done it. They're yep. very, very strict about why they do stuff and how they do it. So yeah. let's see. We'll jam. I'll turn my mic off. We're, no rehearsal here. You ready to play drums? Let's go. amazing it's such a great sounding pedal i can throw that anywhere on my board it's in the boss format which is flawless the foot switching knobs are protected smaller enclosure than really any tone bender out anytime soon uh yeah is it worth it I it's love worth it. the that, retail yeah, absolutely it's worth even some of the crazy price yep. to me not all of it yeah, so I, yeah. Am I going to pay two grand? No, I don't no. think I, I'm going to wait. Right. If I'm a consumer, 
I'm like, wait, you already have two. You're <laughs> yeah, I'm not, you're not paying two. Oh, no, grand. I think it's yeah. I know there's a lot of people watching that would love to have this pedal, yeah. but people are scalping it, and that right. really sucks. And Boss has been clear; they hate that. And Macari's solo sound has been clear. That's dumb. So I'm being clear. That's dumb. Very dumb. <laughs> yeah, nobody's against you. you. They no. did. They did the three thousand. They could do. It's special. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's. Let's jam again. Let's, Let's do it. I was in the 12 volt. Let's go down to seven and max out the fuzz. Let's see. Bridge pickup. Let's see. Getting spacey. Okay. you've played drums before it's been a long time <laughs> this is good this is good yeah again it's a tone bender everything's gonna sound similar here but these settings feel yeah that's a big thing lives you know yeah. first of all youtube's hard it, like, <laughs> the pedal, we've got that going against some, us sometimes the youtube demo is funny to me there's yeah. like you know people sitting around like I swear, I hear some low end. It's like, come on, man. This nope, is not nope. the environment. You don't know the interface, the mic, the cabinet. Like, don't go there. I've got so, lots of roll in, yeah. low end rolled off anyway. I'm wearing, like, I'm I'm in in ears, yeah. isolation cab across the room. I can feel it though. There's definitely the voltage thing is fun. That voltage swing, that's cool. I guess it's a bias. I wouldn't think that's a master voltage. I could be wrong. I would guess that it's like a a bias. Which is um, specific to the transistor. Yeah, it would right? be much? like, okay. maybe. This is, again, I do not know this schematic. This is, yep. uh, if nothing else, this is so you can know how my brain thinks when I pick up a new pedal. When I think about a tone bender, it's germanium. There are temperature instabilities. So maybe that switch is to counteract some changes tonally in different hot or okay. cold. Maybe oh, that's seven, cool. okay. seven, nine, twelve. And again, I could be totally wrong. Yep. It could be something else. Yeah, that that's like the general feeling. Let's do Ernie Ball trivia Let's time. Let's do it. Let's go. And then we'll do a jam at the end. And we're gonna give away the Ernie Ball. Let's do Hercules first, and then we'll do Ernie Ball. Consider yeah. it done. Let's do it. Let's do it. All right. So, oh, there's the camera right there. I'm talking to you out there. If you want to win one of these uh, wall hangers from Hercules. You got to answer this question right. You got to be the first one in the chat to answer it. Joshua is going to give us our answer uh, in a minute. I'm eating Tootsie Rolls. 
after Josh eats more Tootsie Rolls. I'm not going to eat Tootsie Rolls because I don't want to. I'm pretty sure they have milk in them and I can't have milk. So here's a question if you're ready. Here it goes. Actually, it's the first two people. So <laughs> first two people in the comments uh, to get this right. You get a Hercules wall hanger stand. So here it goes. Uh, what female British pop group was originally considered to play the role of muses in Disney's Hercules? Throw it in the comments. All right. This is a this is a deep one. You got to figure it out. First comments on that. That's it. Let's wait on those. Let's just cool. let it simmer, let and it then simmer. we're gonna go into trivia time. This I'm... one surprised me. I was okay. I was like oh, Addison. Man. Yes, talk to me. Yeah. Milk. Right. Just two things. Gluten. Wheat. Just well, gluten. Air. Nope. I can breathe. <laughs> Water. <laughs> Thank goodness. Water's totally fine. Rice. Rice is good. Meat. Are you Meat's allergic okay. to jazz? Yes, <laughs> especially, particularly, uh, fusion. Yeah. Or avant-garde. Can I ask a question real quick yes. about those? Can you tell me? Um, I got lost in the comments a while ago. Which name lost in the comments? <laughs> <laughs> what uh, what tone bender is this? TV two W. So it is a replication of a tone bender I don't actually have. I don't have this it's just really hard to. I mean, it's more findable than the MK1, but it's a the TB2, so it's a Mark II. This is a good replica of the two. This is a Mark II Vox, so I kind of have one, but it's not the same. <laughs> so yeah, it's a Mark II Sola Sound Tone Bender Evolution. It's a recreation collaborative effort. To to they took the 500th Mark II ever made, a real one from 66 I think it's 66 and uh, they I'm assuming that ended up in Japan in a very carefully packaged <laughs> someone flew that thing <laughs> it's possible totally yeah and uh, yeah they took it up and examined it and all that stuff am I on yeah here we on. have two tone benders we have the oh the JHS line the, yes yeah we we have we had the firefly which is a was far discontinued. It was a pro guitar exclusive <laughs> blast Whoa, from the past, dang. but it was a replica of this. And then Legends of Fuzz, um, I took this circuit and we got rid of germanium and did a silicon version that sounds identical to the germanium. I'm not just saying that. We worked really hard on it. It's great. And we had a pedal called the Bun Runner, which had the Firefly in it. So kind of three. Am I, I'm not missing anything. You're That's, 66, well, did 66 you say? Yeah. series fourth. 66 right. series, I make a Mark 1.5 replica. This is a real uh 1.5, a really this is more rare than the Mark II. I found this one, got lucky. So I replicate this in the 66 series. And there's a joke here. This is a cool shirt from uh, sixstringstories.com. Why the long fuzz? Why the long fuzz? It's a long fuzz face. Amazing. Because the 1.5 is a fuzz face oh, type of typology. Okay. I think that's the joke here. I'm reading into it. Honestly, and it's not. if it's that deep, that's pretty good. I made it deep. Maybe. That's I think great. it is that deep. So yeah, the fuzz face, if you watch Petals the Musical, you're a better person. And you learned that the uh, fuzz face came from Ivor Arbiter. Some engineer for Mr. Ivor Arbiter used the same topology of the 1.5 which comes out in 66 some people say late 65 i don't know i wasn't there when time travel exists i'll figure it out uh and dick denny probably was the first to use that in the vox 816 distortion booster so the tone bender has this connection to being it's the first british fuzz kind of it, it is the tone bender is but Dick Denny did the 816 in 65. At least there's advertisements. And then you have all these connected stories. Vox, the reason you see, you know, how can this exist? A Vox tone bender when it was solo sound, color sound. Well, they were next door to each other and they knew each other. And Vox wanted to use the name. And there's some evidence that the name was just a common generality used for distortion, tone bending. That's cool. There is a little hint of that. Okay. I don't know that that's fact. 
It sounds cool. We can though. only assume. Yeah. And sometimes when things sound cool, they're correct. Right. <laughs> and you just you put it out on the internet, and then it'll continue on in history forever. Josh yeah. Scott said yeah. factually. That's the horrifying <laughs> thing about this is we try really hard to yeah. state fact. Um, we even had to make a little edit type in the descriptor of the Lucy Rush video because yep. we found an error. There's an amazing uh, British fuzz historian. His name is Nick. Big shout out to him. And yeah, I'm always trying to learn. I know enough to get in trouble sometimes because these stories are really hard. I've sat with people, interviewed them, but it's hard. It's really hard to get all the pieces right. And all you did was ask how many we have, and now we're here. So see, this is yeah. not good. We just this is great. But people love this. We Come have on. answers. <gasps> yeah, for we do. The question. Oh yeah, we were doing Let's giveaways. Go. It went from giveaways to Pedal History High School. Pedal History High School. That's all for today's Pedal History High School. Over to the giveaways. Stop. Okay, so the uh, answer for the question, which female, Brit which female British pop group was originally considered to play a role? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I'm done. I'm so sorry. <laughs> to play the role of muses in Disney's Hercules. The answer is the Spice Girls. Um, who won that? T L and Matt. Uh, lowercase M A T T. One word, Matt. You guys win. Only. Please. Yep. Go ahead. Sorry. No, you please. I was gonna say only me. Only one of you has the right uh, YouTube screen name, Matt. Not not a million of you <laughs> that have the name Matt. Just the screen name, Matt. Yeah, just yeah. screen name, Matt. That's it. Um, anyways. I also want to say, I know Addison well, and he feels real bad about hitting you. I in the face. really do. Oh, I know he does <laughs> I feel too. So you, bad. Can you hold that over his head? The for thing a few is, months? is yeah, I'm going to, <laughs> I'm going to use this. Right. I'm going to use this. That's um, fair. Ernie please Ball email us at yep. Yeah. Go vlog, <laughs> vlog at jhspedals.com. Give us your shipping address if you're not Matt or TL. Matt lowercase M. Don't email us. Don't, Don't do it. it. Because you started Ernie Ball Trivia Time, now it's it's two. It's double the stakes here. Yeah. This actually worked out nicely. We're also going to ship you a whole... This is a 10-pack of the flat ribbon That's cables. That's what I'm talking about. Amazing. So you didn't know that you were getting two things today, but just one winner is going to get a whole pack of strings. Is this a paid promotion? <laughs> is it technically? I mean, they're no, a sponsor, they're, they're a sponsor, but... And we already yeah. use this stuff. It's we so did. funny. I just like picking at how people think sometimes. Yep. I agree I've with you, that. I literally have shown an episode. Let yep. me say this. Just say it, man. Who is Ernie Ball? Go back. It's like yep. a two-year episode. Yeah, it's forever. Ago. I have a senior picture <laughs> wearing an Ernie Ball shirt. Stop it. <laughs> Get over it, people. I like Ernie Ball. This strap. <laughs> yep. This is my original strap from a band oh. in high school. Ernie Ball. Just need to vent Just sometimes. The comments are so ridiculous. Come anyway, on, Grant. go ahead. Ernie Let's Ball Trivia go. Time. Yep. Okay. Also, these are really great, I want to say. They are. We've oh, been using them. They're like great. Like crazy. Uh, and today, pedal board, mono pedal board cam, real quick. Yeah. You see that guy on the... Oh, wait, you're covering it. You right didn't there. see it. The, the bolt. The it's new great. bolt is amazing. Yeah. It's super cool. Go buy one of those, too. Okay. All Ernie right. Ball Trivia Time. Enough enough <laughs> tangents and rants and throwing Tootsie Rolls of people's noses. Enough. Sorry, Joshua. Here goes. Ready? What famous English rock guitarist came to America in the 1960s and brought back new unknown slinkies strings to other famous UK guitarists upon his return home? Throw the answer in the comments. Whoever gets it first is going to get a whole pack of strings and a pack of 10 flat ribbon cables from Ernie Ball. Today's record time is brought to you by a band that I've historically had a hard time loving as much as I love Oasis. It just needs to be said. I think there's a rivalry here. I have a really good friend, Jason Wilding. Uh, he worked for Wampler for a while. He is over at, uh, what's their name? Uh, the Amp Box. What's the name of the company? Uh, ah, t a Torpedo. Two notes. Yeah, two notes. He's over there now. But I'm a huge Oasis fanboy. And he'd always be like, Blur's better. You know, there's, I think that's a common argument. This is today's record time. Um, it was recorded in London and Iceland, which I think is fun. It is a really classic record. You've heard Song 2, um, the famous riff of Song 2. It's a classic, 
song. Uh, Beetle Bomb. I think there's a humor here. He uh, Jason helped me see that Blur are kind of trolls. Whereas Oasis was more like, we're rock gods, bow down and worship us, which I just, for some reason, was always entertained by that. I don't, I was like a kid in Alabama on a horse farm watching these like completely arrogant British dudes play this amazing music. And it just like, I just, I like this. Are but, those the words that came to your head when you were thinking, you're like, man, these guys are arrogant. Jerks. Oasis was just an attitude explosion. <laughs> Blur, I feel like they're, a little they're not as commercially mm. they're not as commercially polished in the same ways that oasis had these big radio hits but blur is really clever i've really grown to love this record so check it out literally blur blur i yeah it's grown on me it's a good one we haven't done record time a lot we're gonna start, nope. start doing them on the live love it yeah let's do the winner go for let's it go okay the winner of the question what famous English rock guitarist came to America in the 1960s and brought back new unknown slinky strings? Two other famous UK guitarists upon his return home. The answer is Jimmy Page. And uh, the winner, I feel like I have to say it like this, Rough Gentleman. <laughs> so, Rough if, Gentleman? If you, yeah. Plural? Plural. Okay. Uh, so right. if you're Rough Gentleman... Please email us at vlog at jhspedals.com. Give us your shipping address. If you're not rough gentlemen, you know. <laughs> All right. We're going to do one more kind of wrap here. Um, I think we, I intended on kind of closing with a lot of the rants I made earlier, but I've made the points. I think that we need to stop the complaining um, hey, you had a moment, and that's okay. Yeah, we can have, we can all have. And a few I can moments. hear you. Yeah. Oh, your privileged boss yeah. gave you these because you no, no, I bought them from Sweetwater. I saw them. it was a product. I yeah. picked up an actual this phone. Hey, put me on that list immediately. And you got and them. I paid money from my wallet. Yeah, and they're here. Well, is your credit card probably or your debit yeah. card, or whatever? Totally, it I got points. For it. Right, so exactly. If you get points on a credit card, right. the things you buy are free. I yeah. walked into the room today, and Josh started screaming at me about how he bought these pedals with his own money. <laughs> you didn't know what you were. I had no <laughs> idea what was going on. You know, on. I have moments of weakness where I see comments. I'm like, just what is wrong with the world? Well, that's a big question. Just pick <laughs> up. Just get in on something. Yep, and don't complain. I don't know. I know there's five sides to every story. But yeah, I'm excited for this. I'm going to stay excited for this TB2W forever. I, You'll never steal my joy here. I'm not going to let you. Especially with a Boss product. I'm just going to be real yeah. with you. If I didn't have these two, yeah. I was concerned they wouldn't ship them because, hey, I might have been too late. I was going to keep smiling. I was going to wait it out and find one later. Yep. And I would be really happy for the people that got them. Yep. I don't know. I'm just trying to set an example. And sometimes you just get you just get shot to pieces. Maybe maybe we can end on this because today's just a celebration. That's what we're doing. Yeah. We're just celebrating That's all we're with doing Boss. Here. Let's go. Good let's, job, Boss. Let's celebrate with playing a really sad shoegazy song. Yes. Does that sound good? Yes. <laughs> let's do it. That's not enough verb. Let me really go to town here. It's uh, pretty good. Let's see. Joshua, I'm going to throw another one of these at your face. <laughs> I can't stop. All right, all right, all right, here we go. Children, children. This is how I feel when I'm ranting inside of me.
Yeah. Is that good? Are we done? Are we done? We're done. We're done. See y'all later.